Cornerback Len Dawson entered the NFL in 1957. But it wasn't until 1962 that the future star's potential was fully realized. From 1962 through 1968, Len Dawson averaged an impressive 25 touchdown passes per season. Kansas City's head coach Hank Stram labeled his starting quarterback the most accurate passer in pro football. Number 16's MVP performance in Super Bowl IV etched his name into the annals of pro football lore. Is he underrated in the group of Hall of Fame quarterbacks? Maybe. Stay here and make it look like we know what the hell we're doing. He is really a classic underrated player. Underrated? He won a Super Bowl. He's in the Hall of Fame. He shouldn't be on an underrated list. How many mistakes are they going to make out there? Well, geez, tell them to shut their big mouth and call them. Lenny Dawson is underrated. The best quarterback in the NFL and the AFL, week in, week out, the late 1960s, was Len Dawson. Throw that thing on the outside, Leonard. He can't cover that thing, Lenny. Throw it anytime. He ran Hank Stram's system as well as anybody could. Come on, Len. Come on. Get him out of there. Dawson, a quarterback, gets the snap. He makes the run to Mike Garrett. Len Dawson led his league in completion percentage six times. He led his league in touchdowns four times. Quarterbacks of his era, besides him, did not throw 26 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. They threw 20 touchdowns and 25 or 30 interceptions. That's a rotten exhibition of football. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Len Dawson is like a West Coast offense quarterback from today, time traveling back to the 1960s. I think the Chiefs seem like a team that really got there on defense. And I think of, you know, Len Dawson as like an efficient manager. Len Dawson was the quarterback of one of the signal games in the early days of the NFL. Our number 10 most underrated player was the MVP of Super Bowl IV. It was there, wasn't it, boys? It was there, wasn't it? <laughs> I the but does anyone remember? Whenever I see Super Bowl IV highlights, all I see is Hank Stram matriculating down the field. Come on, Lenny! Pump it in there, baby! Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boys! Yes, it's sir. the only Super Bowl where all yes, the highlights take place on the sideline. How in the world can all six of you miss a play like that? All six of you miss a play! Len Dawson got a Super Bowl ring to show for it. Well, Lenny, first of all, was drafted number one by the Pittsburgh Steelers, Buddy Parker. And really didn't play any. He threw about 20 passes, I think, in a three-year span of time. For a couple of years, I was the understudy to Bobby Lane. Now, if you want to learn the proper techniques of quarterbacking, the last guy you would go to would be Bobby Lane. So I developed some terrible habits. The accuracy, the touch, the release was no longer there. I didn't know it, but I had developed some real bad habits. Paul Brown had wanted me when I was in college at Purdue. And uh, going over to Cleveland, my job was to back up Milt Plum. Paul Brown really wasn't looking for a quarterback because he was featuring the running game. And so I could see that uh, I wasn't going to get an opportunity to play. And I hadn't signed the contract. And so he says, he calls me, he says, well, you know, what are you going to do? He signed this contract or else. I mean, he had no choice in those days. And I said, I just soon get out of here. So Paul said, OK, fine, Leonard, I'll put you on waivers. He said, as a fellow coach, I want you to know that I don't think Lenny can play football in the National Football League. I said, well, I, I appreciate that very much, Paul, but I'm still going to take him. Hank Stram was utilizing the running game. He was utilizing the things that I did best. My ball handling was very good. With play action passes really helped because of my ability to handle the football. I could throw on the move, both left and right. And so Hank started featuring that phase of the game. And my strong suit was accuracy. I could throw the ball accurately, and I, and I could throw the ball accurately up to 50 yards. Lenny just was a great judgment thrower. He threw the ball with great, you know, touch on it. Lenny would throw the ball maybe 10 yards ahead. I used to love to run under balls and catch the ball with reach. You know, Lenny 
wasn't a bullet type pass for 60, 70 yards. He threw a softball. A natural leader, a very, very deceptive leader in that he was quiet, but very demanding. When he spoke, they listened because he was always, always under control. I said to him one day, I said, Leonard, make sure that you never let them see you sweat. And he said, Coach, quarterbacks don't sweat. Quarterbacks perspire. Lenny was the man. You know, he was a man. He had taken us a lot of places in earlier years, so he deserved the chance to get out there and play in the Super Bowl. The gambling thing uh, was initiated the week before the Super Bowl game. There's going to be a story out before the game about Lenny Dawson being involved in a gambling scandal. A gentleman by the name of Dawson in Detroit, Michigan, was raided. And in the process, they found an address book and a phone book with a lot of phone numbers in it, one of which was Lenny Dawson's. And they were trying to determine what to do about the situation. And I can remember they're all sitting around. I said, why don't we tell them the truth? I do know this person. I spoke to him twice uh, this year, once when, my, when I injured my knee, and he asked how I was doing. Secondly, when my father passed away to offer his condolences. I haven't seen this guy in I don't know how long. I really don't know him. I don't associate with him. I didn't know anything about his business. I said, that's the truth. And so, oh, yeah, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> I was enraged because of the uh, obvious uh, silliness of such a charge because I knew Lynn Dawson very well and there was no chance that he was going to be involved in, as, they, uh, implicate, as they indicated, possibly throwing games. We never believed the rumors about Lenny and uh, uh, Lenny didn't even have to explain. I think that Lenny just knew that the team and myself were in full support of it.